Hey guys, welcome to my fifth vlog. Um, soon I'm going to have to give this a name, the Road to 2020 Olympic Olympic Games or anything. I'm going to have to. I'm going to put it in the caption. Um, so today I've come across, come off from a one-day tournament here in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. So I think when I came back from Spain in my last vlog, vlog four, if you guys haven't watched it, I mentioned winning a local tournament here in at home called the Croydon Open. So just to give you guys a bit of a, a brief background, um, in Australia there's about six or seven states and where I'm living in Melbourne, Victoria, I think they're, there's the best the best table tennis players in the country come from come from this state and we hold a couple of a fair few let's say 10 to 15 one day tournaments a year where today with the prize money was a thousand Australian dollars for winning the men's open singles last time in Croydon was 600 Australian dollars which I won and today I also won so made 600 bucks in Australian dollars in the last tournament thousand Australian dollars today um, and yeah so last time so I'm battling I'm playing against some of some of Australia's best players and and these one-day tournaments they're just good to they're very good to stay competitive and be under pressure play real matches and and, um, and get get some good match practice so in the last one in Croydon I played very good I played solid from the start to the end and I was in good shape. I was in good form coming back straight straight back home from from Europe. Um, form is something that you, I feel like you can't you can't always control. So you can do all the right things. You can go do your recovery, your ice baths, your your recovery boots, your saunas, whatever it is. Any everything correct. You can stretch after every session. Do the two three gym sessions a week. Do you know five to ten sessions on table a week, and eat well and sleep. Well. Yeah, you can eat well, you can do all the right things, and sometimes you can just be in good form, and sometimes you can just be in bad form. But I will say that if you're doing more of the right things, if you're recovering well, you're training hard, often, with good quality players, you're training smart, all those things, yeah? If you're doing them well, you're going to have more chance just being more consistent. You're going to have more, a much higher chance to come into a tournament, or a day tournament, or a week tournament, whatever it is, and just be, you know, playing solid from start to finish. Whereas if you're training one time a year, you know, you could come into a tournament, your, for, your form's gonna be probably all over the place. You could play extremely well, you could play average, you could play extremely bad. There's just no, there's no consistency there. Anything can happen. Um, that, that's evident from past Australian legend table tennis player, William Hensel, some of you guys may know him. So he, he trains with me, or I think he helps a few other players too, once every two months or month, whenever he's he's not busy or he's, <laughs> his wife hasn't got anything on or something like that. And, you know, he, he could play outstanding because he was an outstanding player before, or he could just play horrible. So, I mean, the more work you put in, there's a more higher chance that you're going to come in and play pretty well. But there's no guarantee. That's That's the beauty of sport, and that's with any athlete in the world. So let's say we talk about Roger Federer or Rafael Nadal, some of the absolute biggest legends that have ever played sport itself, not just tennis. They're playing many, many events every every week, uh, every year actually, and um, and and they can turn up to one tournament and play outstanding, or or they could play average, or they could anything can happen. They can just play pretty poorly, but that that also doesn't mean that you're going to win or lose. So winning and losing depending depends on whether you get those the right selective points or not um, and and at the last tournament at the Croydon Open I played really well from start solid start to finish um, you know I didn't didn't make easy mistakes put all did all the right things so you know the chance of me losing was was generally much lower um, and then today I played the the Mornington Open which was I won that was the similarities in today and the last Croydon tournament there in Croydon Open and but this last whole week, I haven't been feeling great. I haven't been feeling that I'm hitting the ball that well. I'm um, not moving that well. It's just just for some reason, um, and and that that can just happen sometimes. You know, in the training sessions, I had some sessions in the garage and with my coach, and I just said I, I feel bad today. I feel really bad, um, but that's okay. It doesn't mean I'm going to play good or bad on the weekend. It doesn't mean I'm going to win or lose. You know, that all depends on fifty million things. You know. It depends on things in matches such as 
Are you going to be gutsy when it comes close? Are you going to be? Are you going to make the right choices? Are you going to be smart and see what your opponent doesn't like and likes? Are you going to go out there and pick on what he doesn't like, or she for girls that are playing? Um, and are you going to make the? Are you going to make the right choice selections? Are you going to get the? Are you going to get the important balls of the match? So there's a million factors. I could I could be here listing fifty million different things. So, um, you know how good your form is, how well you think you're playing is one thing out of a million. So um, I'm not trying to take away from some players or you know one player that was very close to, to beating me today. And if he's watching this video, you know, I'm not trying to take anything away from you, you know, even if I'm on fantastic form like I was two weeks ago, that's not to say that I would beat you 11-9 in the, in the deciding set like I did today. So that's just, I'm just saying it how it is and yeah. You know, that's not to take anything away from you. You know, you played extremely well and, you know, I even if I'm playing well, that's not to say that I'm going to win for sure, you know. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm going to win the, s the right points at the right moment. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, to, to most of my viewers, is that when you're not playing well, especially this is something a 20-year-old me would have done, would have lost the match, would have said, this is not right, that's not right, that's bad. But then now, I guess how I'm seeing it is, if I'm not playing at my absolute best or how I'd like, that's more reason that I've got to try even harder, and you know that that's, I've got to fight like crazy, like a thousand percent, and that's something that I did today, and I'm extremely proud that I got through today as a winner, and um, even though I didn't feel that fantastic throughout the whole of the whole week, you know, I, I fought through it, and that's what matters. In the end, that's the big difference between a winner and someone who who quits at the end. You know, the winners will will turn up when it doesn't feel good. They'll give a hundred percent, no matter what. And you know, when someone's playing well, it's very easy to it's very easy to go, yeah, I'm playing, I'm feeling great, I'm happy, and then they're just um, doing all the right things. But then when they're not playing well, that's when I feel like you see you see the true character of someone. Are they going to give in or are they going to respect the fact that that happens and you know sometimes in life you're going to win you're going to lose not just in sport you're going to win and you're going to lose sometimes in life you're not going to feel good sometimes you're going to feel great sometimes you're going to feel average sometimes but no matter what you're going to make the most of the opportunities that you have and that's something that i guess i was i'm definitely i'm, I'm really wrapped that i did to, that i did to the fullest extent today So moving on, we've got we've got the national championships in two weeks. So that's that's a very big event for for everyone in everyone in Australia, and that's something that you know today happens. You win or lose, you take the positives and negatives out of it. You you learn from it, and you just move on as a player. You just move on. Okay, what's next? I'm gonna how am I gonna prepare myself best for this and give myself the best chance of preparing myself for this next event um, and. And what am I going to do? Well, what sort of how am I going to how am I going to organize my training with other commitments? And yeah, let's go out there and try and give myself do all the right things, give myself the best opportunity of try, performing at my peak again. So, so going on um, to finish off this this vlog, I'm going to talk a bit about the last trip to Europe when I played the Portugal Open, the Sofias. So, a lot of you probably look at the professional players and think how good are their lives you know like oh, it's so nice to be Roger Federer it's so nice to be Ma Long or Jung Jika, Timo Boll and they, they're making millions man it's so awesome but you know I'm, I'm going to tell you a bit about reality here like yeah their lives are good the, the lives of most professional athletes are good um, they, they, they've got roof on a bigger scale on a big picture they've got a roof over their head, they've got food to eat when they want, they've got the opportunity to do the thing they love most, they're most passionate about. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm not going to lie, the, the life is fantastic. What a lot of people don't see is, they see the top players like Roger Federer and Nadal and tennis, Lionel Messi, Ronaldo and football, soccer, whichever part of the world you're in and you like to call it. Um, Ma Long, Fang Jendong, Timo Boll, Ovcharov, you see these Samson of these top guys in table tennis, They're making a, a lot of money. Sure, it's fantastic. 
Um, what they don't see is these guys that are 200 in the world, 250 in the world, 150 in the world that are very, very, very good as players. Um, but, you know, they can turn up to a pro tour, any sort of event international, and they could get a rough draw or they could play absolutely anything can happen, you know. They can lose first round, they could possibly, they have the potential to win the event, you know, some players, um, they have, you know, and, and it's happened before with great players where they've won or came runner up or gone really far into a pro tour. And then the very next week they travel to somewhere else and then they just lose in the very first match because, you know, you're playing, you're just consistently playing against really, really, really strong players. And whether you get a rough draw or not, that, that, that's another part of it that, you know, can change everything. You know, you can get a lucky draw, you can get an unlucky draw, and even if you get a lucky draw, you could, most of the time you're playing against very capable players and week in, week out, you just, you're constantly on the, under under the pump, you're on pre you're under a lot of pressure. You can you're playing all these matches where you can you can win or lose depending on which how the match swings, which which way the crucial points go, and and all these other things. So yeah, I mean <laughs> everyone has their difficulties in their life, and professional athletes are definitely they definitely have a lot of struggles. And to make it in any sport is extremely extremely tough. So. The next time you, I guess the next, what I'm trying to say is the next time you look at a player, look at a sport and go, okay, I wish I was a professional player. First, you have to understand how difficult it is to make it to the top of every uh, every sport. I'm not at the very top in table tennis and I know that, so I can't tell you what it's like being at the very top in the world of table tennis, but I just know that it's very, very, very hard and it's a tough life. So. I have all respect for everyone who tries and everyone who is a top athlete and I understand that it's really not easy. So I just want you to guys to understand next time before you, I guess, judge certain players in whatever sport you watch that it is very tough. It's tougher than you, th it's tougher than you know and, um, and what everyone in the public sees is the top player, is the top athletes in every sport. What they don't see is that you know, there's some guy out there who's not at the top but is very good and they're just grinding away with their lives and um, and, and yeah, it's, it's extremely difficult. So, respect to all those guys. Thanks for watching my video again and I appreciate you guys following me. Thank you very much.